The Kind Worth Killing began its life as a premise, a simple premise, one in which a man and a woman met on an airplane or in an airport bar, as it turned out, and began a very honest conversation. And the reason this conversation was honest was because they figured they'd never see each other again because people you meet in airports you don't see again. And in this case, um, because of that, the man confesses to the woman that he is um, interested or has been thinking about killing his wife. Uh, of course, in the real world, this would be that probably the end of the story. But in my fictional universe, um, the woman he meets tells him that not only does she think it's a good idea, um, but that she'd be willing to help. Um, so that was the starting point of my book. I'm going to read you the first few pages. They're told from um, the perspective of Ted, um, the man, and the woman he meets is Lily. And um, even though he starts the story, the story winds up having um, many different narrators. But this is Ted at the very beginning, sitting in an airport bar, um, stewing about his wife, and along comes this woman. Hello there, she said. I looked at the pale, freckled hand on the back of the empty bar seat next to me in the business class lounge at Heathrow Airport, then up into the stranger's face. Do I know you, I asked. She didn't look particularly familiar, but her American accent, her crisp white shirt, her sculpted jeans tucked into knee-high boots, all made her look like one of my wife's awful friends. No, sorry, I was just admiring your drink. Do you mind? She folded her long, slender frame onto the leather-padded swivel stool and set her purse on the bar. Is that Jen, she asked about the martini in front of me? Hendrix, I said. She gestured toward the bartender, a teenager with spiky hair and a shiny chin, and asked for a Hendrix martini with two olives. When her drink came, she raised it in my direction. I had one sip left and said, here's to inoculation against international travel. I'll drink to that. I finished my drink and ordered another. She introduced herself, a name I instantly forgot, and I gave her mine, just Ted and not Ted Severson, at least not right then. We sat in the overly padded and overly lit Heathrow lounge, drinking our drinks, exchanging a few remarks, and confirming that we were both waiting to board the same direct flight to Logan Airport in Boston. She removed a slim paperback novel from her purse and began to read it. It gave me an opportunity to really look at her. She was beautiful, long red hair, eyes a lucid greenish blue like tropical waters, and skin so pale it was almost bluish white of skim milk. If a woman like that sits, sits down next to you at your neighborhood bar and compliments your drink order, you think your life is about to change. But the rules are different in airport bars, where your fellow drinkers are about to hurtle away from you in opposite directions. And even though this woman was on her way toward Boston, I was still filled with sick rage at the situation with my wife back home. It was all I had been able to think about during my week in England. I'd barely eaten, barely slept. An announcement came over the loudspeaker in which the two discernible words were Boston and delayed. I glanced at the board above the rows of backlit, top-shelf liquor and watched as our departure time was moved back an hour. Time for another, I said. My treat. Why not, she said, and closed her book, placing it face up on the bar by her purse, The Two Faces of January, by Patricia Highsmith. How's your book? Not one of her best. Nothing worse than a bad book and a long flight delay. What are you reading, she asked. The newspaper. I don't really like books. So what do you do on flights? Drink gin. Plot murders. Interesting. She smiled at me, the first I'd seen.